Hello everyone, welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. It's Francesco here. I'm joined by Alex Emden, who is in San Francisco. Um, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, happy to be here. Yeah, so we uh, we first met at the, well, we sort of knew each other from the, the Notion group, right? Um, and then we did the mini meet up in, in San Francisco um, at a lovely like tea lounge, but we had mm -hmm. beers, it was like, contradictions uh, <laughs> but it, it was, was everything uh, yeah it was good um, and uh, we got to sit down with a, a bunch of um, notion uh, experts and, and, and endorsers uh, and yours I, I think particularly interested me because I get a lot of questions on keep productive um, and through the notion group and, and a lot of people ask how do I use notion in a big team and you've been able to do that um, with Medic Mobile, um, and that's obviously something that I want to dig into. So, yeah, first uh, introduce yourself and, and a little bit about uh, where you work. My name is Alex Emden, and I am an operations associate with Medic Mobile. Medic Mobile is a nonprofit technology company based here in San Francisco, um, but we actually have about four people in our San Francisco office these days. We are a team of 90 overall. Um, and we have offices in, in Nairobi, in Kathmandu, in Nepal. Um, and then we have, other than that, our teammates are spread across 11 countries and 33 cities. So we're very distributed. Um, we're a team of developers, of data scientists, um, all working to build software for health workers in last mile settings. Brilliant. And, and I think what I was so interested about, so your notion and also how you and your team use it is, that it is so distributed. Um, how many people are in your team, roughly? Yeah, so ex it's exactly 89 people. Um, I retallied yesterday for you. And um, it's, it's 89 teammates, and those, everyone is in Notion. Um, we have about 91 people in Notion, because we currently have two consultants as well. Um, we'll have consultants join our our notion once they uh, start with Medic. Anyone with a Medic mobile domain um, can click into Notion as in the way that we have it set up. Amazing. And I remember you briefly explained, but um, what made you choose Notion above the other applications for wikis out there? Yeah, definitely. Um, it was a bit of luck of stumbling upon it, a lot of Googling. And so we previously worked in a, um, it was like a Google Wiki, and we knew we needed a better system. It was really hard to update files and keep it up to date, um, and just wasn't that visually appealing. We have our team as designers and developers and people who are really UI and UX focused, and so I think that definitely, platform that's more visually appealing um, has major benefits for our team. And so, um, and I don't remember exactly where, but some Googling ended me up with Notion, and um, I was able to test it out. I saw they're based in the Mission District here in San Francisco. Um, I was actually able to visit their offices as well. Um, they're about four blocks away from our office, which is great. And it has a very similar interface to Slack. I think that's a lot of um, our team's primary communication being so distributed occurs in Slack. and. Well, as soon as I signed on and saw that it's a lot of the same kind of emoji use, type interface, all of those things were pretty similar um, in the experience, helped push it forward and decided this platform wasn't right, especially um, with pulling from Google Drive, pulling from other tools we were using. Um, it's, yeah, it was a good fit. Lovely, jubbly, fantastic. Well, I, I think it'd be a good time to dive into your Notion account, your team's Notion account. Um, and and we've, I've got a few questions prepared on the side, so I'll ask you as we go. Um, but yeah, take the reins and, and take us through um, how you guys use Notion. Great, so it'll look pretty similar to you saw uh, a couple months back. Not too many changes occurred on our end. We're mainly, uh, the updates we do are mostly link updates and minor text updates. We're pretty happy with the overall format, but um, this is our homepage, so, um, so surprising to some people, but Notion uh, can handle GIFs. So we have this, this GIF of our work, some of the sites that we work in, rotating through our front page. We have our team picture at the top. Um, and if you scroll down, just quick links into all of the pages that are hosted within our Notion. Um, you can see here, just as a quick overview, we have 
uh, things like our org charts, our yearly goals, um, our travel guidelines, internal communications guidelines for how we work. And things as simple as how to order new t-shirts um, and then overall going more in depth about training and work tools um, for being productive in this dispersed remote environment. So uh, just continuing in a bit to show some examples of the formats, I take advantage of pretty much every type of template that Notion has to offer. I think it's really fun to play with them and switch it around, especially once you get into the database templates. Um, I use gallery view a lot. I think it's it's pretty visual, visually appealing. And so, for example, here you do we just have even our office locations. Clicking into it, you can see um, where the address is, who the office admin is, and things like that. Um, you get a little bit of a sense here as well of where our team is around the world. Um, when you first join, it's it can be overwhelming to have join a team of ninety so spread out. And so it's really helpful, um, especially to point to Notion when teammates are first joining with Medic Mobile to get a sense of where our team's located, what, what we do, um, who the other teammates are when you're not meeting them face-to-face -face in that first week, that first month. Fantastic. A question there is when, because obviously you're the sort of main contact for Notion at the team, um, do you find it quite easy um, to onboard people onto Notion uh, from distributed situation? Yeah, definitely. Um, Folks mostly get a handle of it. I, I walk people through, so actually part of our onboarding process is a scheduled walkthrough with myself of going through Notion. Um, all of our onboarding resources are on, on this page, um, are on a collection of pages, mainly medic education. Um, and so just pointing out all, all first teammates' experiences are with a call with me saying, here are the links to go to, here's where I recommend you start, this resource is available, it's constantly evolving, definitely utilize this platform and save these links. Fantastic, yeah, I know that's, that's pretty handy. Yeah, it's actually, I think it's the, some of the people it's most helpful for is those people onboarding to Medic Mobile. Um, and then there are resources that are useful for, for teammates, but in less, fewer pages are applicable um, after your initial six months or so. Yeah, that's it, I can imagine. And, and uh, maybe I'm jumping the gun, but how do you uh, get it so that people are uh, invited to the correct pages? And, you know, obviously, the, I guess you're, you want it to be fairly accessible to everyone, but um, do you have any, like, limitations for certain people access-wise? Yeah, definitely. That's a great question. I think that's one of also the benefits of Notion is that you can set those different limitations. It's less limitations and it's more relevancy. Um, so, for example, our teams are in Africa, Asia, and our, our, our U.S. everywhere else team um, has each have different administrative policies and a little bit different guidelines. And so um, rather than setting sort of access levels, it's allowing pages groups based on um, what team they're on. So Notion has really great, we really utilize groups. So, for example, we have these Asia groups, um, Africa groups, just based on teammates who are in, um, who information will be relevant to them. So we just want to really make sure that where the access level is everyone in the organization, they're having, they can, are able to have access to relevant information. It's not looking at maybe the Asia travel policy if you're on the Africa team. That's it, yeah. Just so that they see a bit of a cleaner notion experience as well. Um, yeah. They know where to go. <laughs> yeah, so. definitely. And we do use a lot of shared pages. So it's less like higher level access. It's just shared pages for some of those items that are less relevant to across the entire team. Um, and we, I lock a lot of pages. Um, I think that most pages don't change too heavily. There's um, some other administrative folk that go in and do quarterly changes and quarterly updates across the whole platform. Um, but I lock a lot of pages just because it's really easy to, especially just clicking into this format, just change the field instead of the text. And we've had that happen over and over again when we started back in May 2018, is a lot of folks were changing the database fields by accident, and it was getting really confusing to track changes. Uh, Notion had it set up as good of an undo or page history scheme yet. Um, so Notion's helping us too with that. But um, locking pages has been really great in anything that we know is going to sit for a while. Brilliant. And um, 
and when when it comes to like planning stuff um do you go about doing any sort of project management or planning inside of notion we don't do as much i do some personal no i love Notion for personal use as well. I have my own totally separate Notion for my personal life um, and for project management. We typically use, we use a lot of other platforms. We use Salesforce, we use Asana um, for different reasons. And it's really based on preference. If Notion works best for an individual, we've encouraged them. And I've gone through a couple walkthroughs on how you can use Kanban boards for that, if for your personal task management. And here's some, some templates for that. Um, but we're really flexible on what folks use as an organization. This is our internal Wikipedia, um, but for your personal task management, uh, it's pretty flexible. Fantastic. And, and I see, I, I remember you showing me uh, a little bit about the conferences and events side, because that's a, a core part of the experience. And um, can you take us through how you use that inside a notion? Yeah, definitely. That's one of my favorite pages. It's, um, <laughs> I think that, the calendar and database pages are awesome for teams. They're very interactive. Um, tagging people is great. Setting reminders is great, um, especially at this large team. So folks don't have to continue to sign in. They get sent these emails and they know to click in that they've been tagged to this, to this conference or this event. Um, so conferences and events right now, I typically use the calendar view of this. I switch back and forth. One of the great things that we do is switch um, so for an event, you have the event date, you have that when the abstract is due for us, we're submitting a lot of abstracts to these more scientific conferences, then you have the registration deadline. So flipping back and forth in these calendars is really helpful for our, our partnerships team to figure out, okay, where do we need to submit abstracts? We have these coming up, um, we get set on planning, we tag the relevant teammates in, we have conversations in here in the, in the comments of the event on, yeah, this is interesting. I think this teammate would be interesting to tag this teammate in. Um, so it's really an interactive interface specifically for this page. Um, you can see we set calendar reminders for the abstracts due to get notified a week before. Um, we would like to customize that date to maybe two weeks before, but that's not possible yet. But a week before is fine right now. Um, and we tag the relevant teammates. And then once you're attending, it's also really helpful just keeping track of so many teammates of seeing, for example, um, just got tagged on this one today and it was, he will be attending and now we're accepted. So just changing the status. And we have yeah. about seven teammates very actively attending conferences on our partnerships teams across all regions, regularly updating and regularly looking at this page. Fantastic. And um, you mentioned this is one of your favorite pages. Uh, do you have any other pages that you, uh, like to shout about and, and, and enjoy using as a way to keep coordinated? Yeah, definitely. I think um, there's, let's see, there are two. Um, I have so many favorites. <laughs> <laughs> so one of them is, um, as I mentioned, because we're so spread out and we're just trying to keep track of um, when you jo just join who everyone is, say you're about to visit a regional office and you want to know people's faces before you're there. You want to have a general sense of who you're visiting and who's on the team. Um, this is a really helpful page we built out with a more casual version of our website pages for contacts. And so this has um, people's positions, where they're based, um, down, and then some hobbies. So beyond a little more casual than just the website team page where you can see um, something's really cool. Our partnerships team all really enjoys bird watching across regions. And that was awesome to see and just have. These people, a lot of our interactions are work focused and I want uh, a lot of what I try to do is help make that a little more casual and um, help people build relationships beyond just the Slack conversations. Yeah, definitely. That's quite a nice uh, sort of way to approach it. I, I like that. I remember you showed me that and I was like, uh, we've got to do that internally as we build our team. <laughs> it's yeah. Definitely. It's great just to have people's faces grouped together and it's not in the website. It's separated by region. Now it's by department. So it's just a really great way to organize. Um, I get to use a gallery view here as well. Um, I find with gallery view, sometimes people don't necessarily know to click in and I wanted to have the information fully available. So I chose this view for now. Maybe I'll switch to gallery at some point later. <laughs> Lovely. Um, another Favorite resource, this medic education page is one of my favorites. So as I mentioned with onboarding, this is a really helpful resource for us. Um, and it has, we use a ton of abbrevi abbreviations in mHealth. Um, 
even M Health is an abbreviation. So um, <laughs> we are constantly using abbreviations, and a lot of what I what I point people to when they first start is checking out the glossary and abbreviations. Um, we have onboarding literature, links to documents about community health, about what is uh, about why global health, about who it, what is a community health worker, who are they, what is their role, and these are guiding documents for why our organization exists, why we do the work we do, and are really helpful for folks to point them in the right direction. Um, we also have, and here, this fun virtual library, um, which we're working on building out now, but I'm, I don't think this existed when, when we met up previously. And I can't remember it. I can't remember this one. Yeah, so this is anytime someone recommends, this happens a lot on Slack, folks are recommending books, and they were kind of disappearing in Slack history. So this is a really great way it tags, it goes in from global health to work life to management and leadership and you can do tags and this is uh, when teammates join, I point them to this page and say, hey, here are some books that our team has recommended for the industry and for remote work culture um, if you're looking for a new book. Perfect. Yeah, that looks really uh, a good uh, sort of library, virtual library, literally. Um, yeah. and, uh, and and when it comes to... I. I think some people are probably watching and going, this looks fantastic as a resource to be able to find stuff. Um, obviously, uh, it, it seems like it's a really strong internal wiki for you guys, but uh, what are the things you would say that Notion lacks at the moment just for the sake of helping someone make like work out whether it's a right tool for them? Yeah, definitely. I would say um, the flexibility of anyone, well, locking databases and locking pages really, really helped with, um, accidental edits. That was a big issue with, with us when we first got started. Um, it's a little bit le not as intuitive to where you're supposed to change, how easy it is to accidentally edit something when a page isn't locked or when the, the access isn't set right. So making sure you're pretty careful on, on sharing settings and making sure that you have that set up correctly would be, would be my main thing. Um, otherwise, I'm pretty happy with Notion. I think we're really waiting on some some key integrations. And so, for example, Zapier we use all the time. It'd be great to have um, Slack and Notion talk to each other a bit better. For an admin side, I use Slack. You Slack and Notion does have a Slack integration right now. Um, you can't limit what's sent to the channel, so it ends up a little bit spammy. But I use it to check where folks are making edits and where I should be jumping in to help support. And so I actually get every change that anyone makes on Notion in a Slack channel that's private. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so that, it's, yeah it's, it's intense, but it's helpful because if someone changed yeah. something and maybe that shouldn't have been changed, especially in early adoption stages, um, it was helpful to maybe know what teammate made the change and go point to them and say, hey, here, I know you saw you made this change. Actually, this field would be a better place for that or maybe like this, this is how you actually should um, revise yeah. this database. And the thing is as well, because Slack, you've got that Slack message, you can forward it on to that person and say, this is a specific, you know, you don't have to go and screenshot the all updates page in Notion for that. Yeah, I yeah, I think, I think that we're waiting on some, a couple key integrations and a little bit more of that different interfaces we use to talk to each other. But mm. um, it's been a really great, great platform for us. We, we don't have, we don't have too many issues with it, I'd say. It takes folks a bit to learn formatting. Um, I'm really focused on making pages as visually appealing as possible. And so I do a lot of reformatting, but from a general inserting context perspective, uh, it's been really easy for our team to grasp. Well, that's what I think though. I think like when you've got a team of 90 and you come into an application like this, it's, a, it's about making it as, as least daunting as possible for them. Um, so the visual appealing thing actually does come into play really well. Um, and, and you've done that a lot with the, the iconography as well, obviously branding it. And is it called white labeling? I don't know. Like, yeah, when you customize things to. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. since we're an application, we're a software company as well. We have a ton of icons. We have a whole icon library of ourselves. Um, I love using the logos and using, you can see a couple of these are, are our personal icons. Um, and it's fun just to see that our team's influence is here and, uh, like inserting the gifts and inserting, we have some screenshots of the application deeper into the into the pages. Fantastic. Well, um, I, I I've just got one final question, and that's um, I was chatting with uh, uh, someone just before the call, um, Sean, and he was setting up Notion for his startup, and 
I think there's sometimes uh, like a few questions when it comes to creating team pages. Um, if you take yourself back to when you first started with this, uh, do you have any advice for like somebody setting up something like this um, that maybe would be helpful for them at that stage? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think my main tip would just be really focused on what already exists. Um, it can get most of the things and most of the text you want for this new platform already exists somewhere else in your organization to some extent. And so once we got that existing documentation we had, um, we are all of these lives in Google Drive, um, all of these, this information. We didn't create anything new. And I think that made it a lot more manageable of focusing on, okay, here's what already exists. Here's what we have. Now that this looks awesome and we've built this out, let's figure out what we might be missing and where the gaps are and then create those pages. Um, because it can be a very daunting project being like, we need a whole new wiki. Let's go. So yeah. um, I'd say just reusing language, reusing um, anything that already exists. You already have the formatting. The most difficult part is kind of setting up the structure of what you're going to include. But if it's a wiki, a lot of this is, is almost like a template almost of mm -hmm. what's down the side here. You have, okay, when are our holidays and meetups? What's our travel policy? Um, we're working on merging our handbook into, into fully into Notion based on a great example we saw on Notion, Notion Pages. And so also really look to Notion Pages and obviously Francesca's resources as well. You have some great tools for getting started and um, just getting ideas. I think I, I got a lot of the names of these pages from looking at a ton of other people's Notions. Yeah, that's it. Like uh, bringing stuff together. I like I like the advice on the fact that you bring in stuff you already sort of know because a lot of people just want to create stuff that doesn't exist yet, and then that can you know, yeah. No, that's a really good idea. Um, no, yeah, thank you. Also, I would say one more thing is just to have a, a partner in it. Um, it's really kind of daunting to be the only person at the organization um, building out one of these resources, and so. RHR people operations teammate is works really closely with me a lot of the content that she's building um, Ends up on notion and so she's the one who I do those quarterly check-ins with and just review the whole platform and it's really helpful to have that kind of extra motivator to um, Have someone on your back making sure you're updating it making sure you're you're keeping up with what you say you're gonna do Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, and um, what, one final question and because it popped into my head again um, is when, when it comes to like a big change inside of Notion, um, do you go about like making a Slack post about what's happened or do you like, like, like how do you communicate the changes and locations of things? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we have a Slack channel called General, which is important announcements across the organization. And so if we're moving, say this is like a month out for us, but if we're moving handbooks up to um, the shared workspace, we'll post to the Slack channel an overview of what it is, and then as well as a link to the page and a person to go to if you have questions or feedback, whether that's myself or, or Brittany, if it's more in her realm of HR people operations. That's brilliant. No, that was, uh, that was really, really helpful, Alex. Thank you so much for taking the time out to dive into this. And um, where can people find uh, you and Medic Mobile afterwards? Yeah, definitely. So um, Medic Mobile, I actually have a page for this. Oh, Let's get see. on. <laughs> uh, so all of our um, comms and social media is here, actually, in this, in this nice shared Notion page. Um, you can see our Instagram, Twitter. We're on every social media platform. And then my email is emden at medicmobile.org and I'll just type that here. This is this is dangerous, so you're gonna get too many notion questions. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I definitely, especially starting with I'm really excited about helping um, nonprofit organizations get this started. I know it's it's daunting, especially in that kind of organization, a lot of the structure an organization falls a bit to the back end and mm -hmm. I'm happy to, to help field any questions. Uh, thank you, Alex. Well, thanks for taking the time out and uh, this is really, really helpful. So uh, thank you so much. Yeah, definitely. Great to talk to you. Great to catch up. Hope to see you in San Francisco Brilliant. again soon. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to come over again and uh, we'll, go for a, we'll go for a coffee this time. <laughs> Perfect.